Discussing world-changing ideas through real conversations. Exploring the potential of technology to solve the most critical challenges facing business, people and the planet. Coming up... Gotong Rowing basically means communal service, communal assistance. It's actually ingrained in the lives and system of Indonesian. Back in the days, uh, in the village, if there's an occasion, whether it's good occasion or a bad occasion, everyone comes out and chips in, regardless whether it's money, uh, you know, everyone chips in for the benefit of the good of the village. Right, so that's what Gotong Rowing means. Basically, it means collaboration. This is the Real Conversations podcast by Nokia. Here is Michael Hainsworth. Multi-operator core networks, MOKIN. It's a transformational technology for communications service providers who have two or more networks that must work together to leverage the spectrum and infrastructure that supports it. MOKIN is just one linchpin to the successful merger at Indosat Oridu Hutchinson in Indonesia. Sanjay Vagazia, the chief integration officer at IOH, had a big job and he couldn't have done it without MOKIN and the Indonesian cultural mindset of Gotong Royong. One partner came in with two uh, spectrum holdings and the other operator had three spectrum holdings. When we combined those spectrums, we went from two to three. Number two, the physical number of sites uh, combined, we had about 60,000 sites across Indonesia. And that's a huge number. Now, when we combined the spectrums, we combined the sites together, obviously there were some overlaps. We had to drop about 17,000 sites and we had to keep about 43,000, 45,000 sites. Now, what does this mean in terms of Mokan with the incremental spectrum, with the combined optimized positioning of the 43,000 sites? It not only gave additional capacity to our existing customers, but it also gave us larger coverage uh, to the population of Indonesia. We had coverage, uh, we were, start, were starting to cover uh, areas where we were not covered before, and we started providing services to consumers that we were not able to reach them prior to this. So net-net, it was a massive uh, growth from a capacity, uh, reach, and accessibility uh, for the consumers uh, in the entire integration. And I can imagine as part of that, there was some benefit on a cost basis too. If you're dropping 17,000 sites, 30% of the sites because they're overlapping, I can imagine that certainly helps the bottom line. It does. It does. But w- one thing I have to say up front is that the in- whole idea of merger was not to drive uh, cost optimization. That was obviously an outcome uh, um as part of the integration, the, the, main, the main purpose of it was to collaborate together, two large telco operators in Indonesia coming together, joining forces and bringing the best services it can uh, to the people of Indonesia. Now, if this at the end of the day resulted in some kind of savings moving forward, so be it. But ultimately, it was about how can we be relevant post-COVID when capital outlay demand for operators increased significantly. The competition against OTT uh, was getting tougher, or is getting tougher as, I can, uh, as we speak. And the, 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 the demand for data is increasing. So how does uh, you know, mobile operators in today's world uh, continue to support that and be relevant? So again, back to your point that this is all about optimizing the available spectrum that the combined entities had. Exactly. Exactly. So what were the results of this project one year later? (laughs) One year later, uh, actually, to be honest with you, we we started off uh, a plan of 24 months and somehow or other we managed to do that in a year. And and I'll come to that uh, on on how we did that in a year. So we did that in a year. We increased our customer base to 100 million within the first year itself. We did not lose any customers, unlike any other mergers uh, that took place around the globe. And the confidence of the consumers increased significantly because they understood that we were not just doing it for the sake of benefiting the shareholders, but we were there as serious partners uh, to enable digital agenda uh, for not only the uh, the country, but also for uh, IOH for that matter. I'm just fascinated by the idea that you went in expecting this to take two years. It only took one year. It sort of reminds me of... Um, Star Trek's engineer Scotty always telling Captain Kirk it would take twice as long as it actually did. He must have walked away looking like a rock star. Um, 
or, or a chief engineer of a starship. But when we, when we first started this and we pitched this to the shareholders saying, uh, you know, the shareholders believe that this was a 24-month exercise. The partners thought 24 months was way, way too short. Uh, we came back and said, you know what, let's try doing it in a year. Um, it's never been done. It's not tested. There's no textbook that you can get that says, you know, this is how a MOCAN and integration needs to be done. These are the, the things, these are the do's and the don'ts. And this is what you need to do in order for you to complete it half the time. I think the approach that we did was very, very different. We brought the partners together. We didn't treat them as, as suppliers, as many operators do with the uh, partners. We brought them in. We brought them. Just, we brought in their subcontractors, despite the fact that we had no relation with their subcontractors. We brought them in as well because they were party to ensuring that we could deliver this. And uh, the approach we took was we said, you know what, if we were going to benefit from this, everybody else in the system should benefit from it, i.e. instead of a carrot and stick, we said, you know what? Everyone should get a carrot of this. Everyone deserved a reward. And and the the turning point was that when we said that we're going to put a sizable amount of reward on the table for everyone, and this is not just the employees of the partner in the ecosystem, but it's also the subcontractors and their employees. And, you know, the amount that we put aside was sizable to the fact that it could potentially be equating to um, an, an AOP of a smaller operator uh, globally. Uh, many skeptics came across. The shareholders turned around and said, has this been done? We said, no. Uh, can you give us a track record of anybody else has done this before? We said, no. But what is there to lose? I mean, what worse can come out of it? Instead of 24 months, we do it in 20 months. We got four months earlier. But lo and behold, we did it in a year. And now when we look back, uh, it was of a mammoth of a task that we accomplished together with not just uh, IOH, but also together with the partners like uh, Nokia. It feels like a lot of the success of the deployment of of a Mokin came down for you to to philosophy. You know, I, I I understand there's the Indonesian philosophy of Gotong Royong, and, and that played a big role in why you managed to accomplish this task in such a short time. Yes. Um, before I answer that, let me just kind of shed a bit of light. What does Gotong Royong mean? Mm -hmm. It's actually um, ingrained in the lives and system of Indonesian. Gotong Royong basically means communal service, communal assistance. Back in the days, uh, in the village, uh, if there's an occasion, whether it's good occasion or a bad occasion, everyone comes out and chips in. Regardless whether it's money, uh, you know, everyone chips in for the benefit of the good of the village, right? So that's what Gotong Royong means. Basically, it means collaboration. Hence, in today's modern world, the Word Gotong Royong, i.e. collaboration, has been synonymous in terms of the way we operate. And we kind of embraced that and said, you know what? This has to be a Gotong Royong. This has to be a collaboration moving forward because this is not a one-man show. This is not one team show kind of thing. Everybody has to come together. And when we brought everybody in and we said, this is a greater mission. Uh, and this is what we're trying to achieve. Yes, there were skeptics. Uh, Moody's, for that matter, uh, downgraded our ratings. <laughs> When we when we when we uh, told them we're going to merge, but two years later now they've uh, ranked us uh, AA plus. Uh, so things have definitely changed from uh, south to north, and this whole Gotong Royong concept has basically been the major catalyst to where we are today. So I can imagine when you apply that, you have to start that integration journey by asking how you get everyone behind a common agenda. How did you do that? It wasn't easy. I mean, you know, trying to get everyone to look north, when you put 10 people in a room, you'll get a few looking south and east and west. But I guess when we brought partners in like Nokia in and we said, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do. And this is the greater purpose. It is not about the development and the growth of Indosat, but it is the growth of the country. We are here to develop Indonesia. We are here to assist the, the digital Indonesia agenda. And we can only do this by embarking and, and delivering the blueprint of the integration that we have set, that we put forward. And, and everyone kind of around the table said, okay, fine, let's put our best foot forward. And, you know, we take one step at a time and see uh, how, how do we get there. And eventually, if any, and any, any event or a time that we find that we are struggling, then we have to come together and find solutions to the problems. 
because a problem is not somebody else's problem, it's everybody's problem. So I think we we kind of agreed that we had one mission and, and, and one agenda, which was to enable uh, uh, the digital agenda for Indonesia. It was a, it was a, it was a bigger and greater purpose. It, I, I, I can imagine that if one was to look at a map, they would understand just how incredible a one-year turnaround is on a project of this size. The geography is complex, thousands of islands, and on top of that, you've got these extreme weather conditions. How did you stay on track? We, we had to technically, I mean, it's not just weather and geography and thousands of islands. The language was also different from one island to the other. Mm. So that was also a challenging part. So we had to break the islands into uh, mini countries by itself. And each of these sec- segments, as we call it, or sp- small countries, we had an independent team that in- had independent goals that they needed to, de- they needed to deliver. So it was kind of cascaded down to the point that uh, the country was divided into regions. Regions were divided into sub-regions, sub-regions into a smaller, smaller regions to the point that it just became a, a massive production line that delivered all of this. We couldn't bring contractors from Java to Sumatra, Sumatra to Nusra because not only they were not willing to operate in those parts of the, of the island, but it's just a language barrier was also another problem. So hence we had to get the local contractors from those particular islands who could deliver and had the size of teams that we were demanding. So that was also challenging, but eventually we became around and we found a solution to it. After this podcast, learn more about this and other insightful topics by going to nokia.com slash thought dash leadership. There you'll find additional information linked to today's podcast. Tell me about the unexpected lesson that came with the approach of breaking a large geographical area into smaller regions, because then I can imagine you run the risk of groups being isolated, working just within themselves, not collaborating with their colleagues. How did you overcome that? You know, initially it was a nightmare. Um, we thought that was the winning formula, but it wasn't. It came to a point that we had to put brakes on and say, hang on, guys, we are not moving anywhere. And uh, just quoting the book from Peter Thiel, Zero to One, we were not being able to kind of break the zero to one cycle. We were kind of going and chasing our own tails. One of the biggest learnings that I can take away from this and share openly is to bring every single partner into the single room. Until and unless you don't bring everyone who is a party to deliver the project that you have into one room, regardless of uh, the color of the badge they're wearing, you are always going to face this problem. And the minute we brought everyone together and the lessons that were learned and problems that was overcome by one partner was immediately shared to the other partner and vice versa. And that became the biggest uh, lessons learned for us. And that was basically the unlocking the problem for us. And that's when we went from zero to one and one to hundred. So then if that was one of the hardest lessons you had to learn, tell me about your favorite deployment story. When we celebrated the first thousand sites, I mean, we had 43,000 sites to do, right? So we said, okay, fine. You know what, guys, let's celebrate every small steps and achievements. And we said, you know, a thousand is a sizable number. It's a drop in the ocean when you talk about 43,000 sites. But when we had thousand sites and we celebrated and, and uh, the look on everyone's faces in the room basically clearly said, you know what? We made it. The sky's the limit. We have done it. And, 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 and nothing's holding us back now. And, and you know, the machine is just running from now on, right? The train's loose and, you know, put on your seatbelts and, and we're just going to rock this. And that's what happened after that. So did you have 47 separate celebrations or was there <laughs> just one big one at the end? Nah, nah, nah. We, we, we had celebrations every thousand sites. So, I mean, we, we literally had 43 celebrations, but it, it was amazing. I mean, and we had, you know, screens on every floors. We had screens on every elevators that, projected every single minute of the day, every single hour of the day in terms of, you know, the achievement that the team was bringing uh, to the table, right? And, and that was basically, it was not just the technology team or the partner team, but this was across the organization, every single vertical. What I'm learning from our conversation here is that while this was a remarkable technical feat, and there was a lot involved in that, the real success 
had less to do about the tech and more to do about the people and the relationships. Exactly. People are the greatest assets in any organization. And the bigger assets are the partners. And this is where I think as as business, as corporates, we fail to understand that the, the, the value that the partners can bring to the table is enormous. And the day you stop treating your partners as vendors and you start treating them as partners, that is when you're on a winning streak. And that was one of the uh, steps that we took um, in the integration journey that we said, they are not our vendors, they are partners, i.e. Nokia is our partner to us. We are on a long, long-term journey here. We are not on a short-term gain. We are not here for a short haul. The sky's the limit after this. Tell me about that sky. Technically, now that you've accomplished this, what does this mean for IOH on that technical level for its next phase? We managed to gain a million customers within the first year. So the confidence of the consumers in the market has increased significantly. That's number one. Number two, we are now embarking on our, our greater main, main purpose, which we started off, which was basically to enable digital Indonesia. The biggest ambition that we have is to be the catalyst and the operator of choice for every Indonesian when it comes to digital. We are increasing digital literacy. We are ensuring that digital is enabled for every single Indonesian, regardless of whether they are consumers or not. We are here to enable Indonesia and we are here to ensure that we are the vehicle to deliver this for the government of Indo Indonesia. We have a larger and greater purpose. Despite the fact that you have the interest from shareholders in terms of what they require, but operationally you have a slightly different, not a, not a difference of opinion, but a slightly different view because obviously the shareholders are looking at profitability, uh, lower cost of operations, and 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 uh, so on. But I guess, and uh, from an operational perspective, we have a larger and greater purpose. If we are able to deliver what we need from a vision and mission, and the synergy comes in slightly later, that's fine. But the minute you put synergy before your greater vision and mission, that's when it convolutes, and that's when you end up becoming like what the other mergers have ended up being themselves whereby most of the mergers globally have failed because the first thing that I had in mind was to bring the synergy as as fast as possible and and and, and to the upfront phase which defeats the purpose about what was the mission and vision. So now that you've deployed a multi-operator core network under 4G, how does this set the stage for advancing Indonesia's demand for digital in 5G? It's just a stepping stone because with this work on, on 2G and 4G that we have done, uh, it just becomes much easier for us to enable this on 5G. And everyone knows that 5G capital outlay is significantly higher compared to the 4G and 3G technologies. We, we are just ready for that. And, and, and like I said, once 5G spectrum is made available, uh, we will enable 5G. The use cases will be made available to the, the larger masses in Indonesia. There are about 60 million SMBs and rural S in, in rural Indonesia that have not had digital access at all. It, they're just waiting for an access. And the minute you have this given to them, imagine the growth of Indonesia. Indonesia is going to be one of the largest and fastest growing economy in ASEAN in the next 24 to 36 months. It's just, it's just waiting to rocket. Sounds like a brighter future. Nothing is going to hold us back. Building a future that's productive, sustainable, and inclusive in a world that acts together. Discover how by visiting nokia.com slash thought-leadership.